Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iOS Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up, storage warnings got you down. We got lots of ways to free up the storage on your iPhone and your iPad. Plus, disabling Siri on the lock screen and a way to learn world geography painlessly. And a great way to save the world from destruction on iOS Today. Yay! iOS Today is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for the right payments API, check out the Braintree V.0 SDK. With one simple integration, you get every way to pay. To learn more and to try out the sandbox, go to braintreepayments.com slash iOS Today. And by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you all the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. To see what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free, go to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. And by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash iOS today. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash iOS today. Today, I am Mr. Cupcake. Leo Laporte. Oh, that's right. That's your name. <laughs> and that's Megan Maroney. Hi, Megan. Yes, Mrs. Cupcake. Miss, Mr. Just... Mrs. Cupcake. On... <laughs> no, we were laughing before the show. I had to get a, a, a carousel, which is a Dropbox program, working to show you a little later. And it had a, a cupcake saying, you have to do these three things or I'm not going away. Mm -hmm. So I literally had to go through this tutorial to get rid of Mr. Cupcake. And then the cupcake vomited stars. That was a little much, <laughs> Mr. Cupcake. So we are going to talk about storage today. We're going to talk about, because I get those warnings all the time. It's so annoying. And I thought, you know, this show is for you. It's also for me. I need to know how to free up lots of storage on my iPhone well, and my iPad. Let me start, because the number one thing that uses up storage, especially on your phone, because you take a lot of pictures, is pictures. Mm -hmm. Pictures and video. And every single person in my family has at one point or another come to me saying, my phone is full. Yesterday, we were doing pictures after Twit. Somebody said, oh, your phone is full. And it's full of pictures. Mm -hmm. And you know, Apple, uh, I think they've tried to solve this with iOS 8.3 8 because of this new photos thing. But really, the problem is that people do take a lot of pictures with their phone, and then they just leave them on their phone. Because, And I ask them, I say, well, I want to show people. Right. I want the pictures to be available. So the, the thing here is to get the pictures off your phone for a couple of reasons. One, to save space, but also, because you want to back them up. So backing up to iCloud is great, although with only five gigabytes of storage, it won't take long before you fill that up, and then it gets pretty expensive to buy more storage. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you what Dropbox has for you. Now, if you use Dropbox on your iPhone or your iPad, you can set it up to automatically copy photos that you take to the Dropbox cloud. You can then delete the photos and not worry. And you may say, well, but Leo, I want to show photos to my friends. They have a great app for that. Actually, it does a lot of fun things called Carousel. Carousel lets you, like a slideshow carousel, look through your photos. You can say, oh, I like that photo. You can share it, send it to friends. If you're, you know, you're, you're talking to friends and they say, oh, I want to see your photos of your trip to Europe, I can say, oh, yeah, here they are. But they're not on the phone taking up space. They're not on the iPad taking up space. They're in the cloud, in the Dropbox cloud. Now, you can still do things with them. For instance, if I press the share button, I can share it to an album in Carousel, get a link that I can paste into email, save it to my camera roll. In other words, I can put it back on my phone or my uh, iPad. Or if I took the picture on my phone, I could put it on my iPad for the first time. Messages, mail, Facebook, and of course, uh, a lot more. Now, the other thing that's really cool is from time to time you'll get a message from Carousel saying, hey, I've put together some of your pictures mm -hmm. from this day. Would you like to see them? And that's kind of fun, too. So Carousel is, a, I think, a nice solution. If you're already paying for Dropbox, already using Dropbox, I think it's, it's great. Carousel has a nice uh, feature for people who have a lot of pictures, a timeline 
that you can swipe through photos, go all the way back to the beginning or all the way to the end. I think that's really fun too. It's called Carousel. It's from Dropbox. It's free, but you have to pay for Dropbox storage. They only give you a couple of gigabytes to start. I have a couple questions for you. You say they're not sitting on your phone, but you do have to manually delete them from your phone, right? They don't, you do, don't yeah. upload to Dropbox and then not yeah. stay on your phone. So yeah. you have to manually. And this is a little bit less important now because of Photos, the new iOS app. It will, if you turn on the, uh, the Photos, iCloud Photos library, it will automatically save everything to the cloud and only put, uh, I don't, I don't want to say low quality, smaller versions of those photos on your phone. It'll automatically do that for you. Uh, size is suitable for the screen that you're using, whether it's the iPhone screen or the iPad screen. Um, so photos is also a, a way to do this. You can now in photos, by the way, do mass deletions. And that's a good thing too. Photos will let you select whole albums, select your whole thing. Uh, uh, and that's photos on the Mac, but of course there's a photos on uh, iOS as well. I have another question for yes. you about this. Um, Will my photos automatically be backed up to my Mac or Only not? Only if you say so. Okay, so where do I say so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do so, I have to hook it up with a USB? No. So okay. if you want, that's probably the, the best way to do it because it's free, right? You, you, you store it on your Mac. Right. You've got kind of lots of, I hope, lots of storage on your Mac. Yeah. You also, I hope, have a good backup solution on your Mac. So that's a great idea. You're getting them off the camera and you're getting them onto somewhere that's more permanent plus backing them up. So I do periodically connect my phone. What will happen is the Photos app will launch on your Mac if you've got a late model Mac. If you have an older Mac, iPhoto will launch. It'll say import, you say yes, and at the end of the import, and this is the easiest way to wipe them off your camera, and do this is to check that box that says yes, delete photos after import. Then you'll have a copy. But you don't have to, you doesn't have to connect it. You could also use uh, iCloud storage. So uh, that you turn on, uh, I think you turn that. Now, uh, this is one thing that always drives me crazy. It is very confusing, isn't it? I think you turn that on in the photos settings, uh, but I'm not sure. Maybe I, maybe I turn it, probably I turn it on the iCloud settings. Your head. So let's, uh, let's look, at, yeah, yeah, it's probably this, right? So I've got family sharing turned on. I've got my storage, 182 gigabytes. That's in the cloud, right? You, one thing that you do have to remember is that cloud storage from Apple is expensive. And then you see the photo, you can choose what's stored and photos is one of those items. So let me click photos. And this is where you turn on the iCloud photo library. So it's in settings, it's in iCloud and then you turn on iCloud Photo Library. This automatically uploads and stores your entire library on the iPad or on the iPhone to iCloud. And that lets you access those photos and videos from all your other iOS devices and your Macintosh too using the Photos app. Um, oh, so that is, does include the Photos app. It does include, it is the Photos app, okay? Very so, uh, I know. <laughs> uh, now notice, this is the thing you wanna make sure you optimize iPad storage. This would say that's optimized iPhone storage on your iPhone. You, you currently, if you have a space problem, are probably doing the download and keep originals. That means your phone is filling up with full image, full size images. Do the optimized iPad or optimized iPhone storage. What it'll do is it'll keep photos on your iPad in a smaller format. Um, and it'll say, if, and it says it here, if your device is low on space, full resolution photos and videos are automatically replaced with optimized. That means smaller versions. Um, so uh, this is, uh, you can decide also, you know when you take burst photos on your iPhone, mm -hmm. you take 10 photos in a second? Right. You can turn that on or off. I don't usually upload all the burst photos. Now the thing to remember is this is going to depend on your iCloud storage and if you only have five gigabytes, it's not going to take long to fill that up. And that's why I still connect via hardware and uh, copy them to the Mac. Right. Uh, and, I mean, it's not a bad idea to have them on your Mac and to have them on Carousel and to even have them on another cloud. Or you can use Google. I use Google Photos, yeah, too. Yeah, so I think you should, one backup isn't enough. You should no. have more than one backup. You know, when so I was traveling, I took a lot of pictures, several hundred pictures a day. And always the fear when you travel is you're going to take these pictures, you're going to lose your camera, you're going to lose the storage. Uh, so in the past, what I've done is brought a computer, backed it up, then backed up the backup, had two hard drives, put one in my luggage, one in my carry-on. Not anymore. I didn't have to worry about it. Right. I copied everything to my iPad, and then, or actually, in my case, it was an iPhone, and then let it upload to all of these different services. So I had copies of my photos. It would do it overnight because the mm -hmm. ship's internet wasn't super fast, but it was good enough. I didn't ever have to worry about losing photos. Yeah. I have all my photos now on Carousel, on uh, on uh, um, iCloud, 
and on photos, Google Photos. And I have them all there, and also two other places. Because Where I else just, do you I store have, them? I store them on Flickr, because like Google, uh, you have unlimited. Right. So, um, you know, I just have them well, uploaded terabytes, automatically. Well, it's terabytes, but it's... Yes, for, that's a lot. for now. Um, that's virtually unlimited. And Google Photos. And also, I uh, have been experim experimenting with an app called Trunks. Have you heard I of Trunks? I don't know Trunks. Let's see that. Um, Trunks is, is a better on the iPhone app, but there is also an iPad app. Let's see. Here it is. And they're not free. But so you can see that all these exclamation points means that I've already used up my 15 gigabytes, or which are free. And then after that, you they do the thing where you know tweet this or send you know an email to Facebook, send a uh, a Facebook post, and then you'll get more space. Or you can pay for it. That's kind of but interesting. It's, it's I've never cheaper. heard of this. So iCloud so storage is so expensive. 9.99. Yeah. Um, this is 4.99 a month for one terabyte. So that's cheaper. That's a so. lot. That's half the price. Yeah. So um, and also it just has an interesting. Um, Let's not keep showing that car. Uh, <laughs> calendar, so I can go back Ooh, and see nice. all. And it pulled in my Dropbox photos that I had. Um, so I have had photos back going back. Um, so I pulled all those in. So that's a lot of photos. So, of course, that's why. I haven't um, broken down and paid uh, the $4.99 a month. But you can search by tags if you were to tag. So these are all the ones that I had on Dropbox or Facebook or Instagram or, you know, the different things that you've used um, and or that your children have used. That is <laughs> what that is about. You know, this could fill up your camera really fast if yes. you let the kids take pictures because they'll take hundreds of pictures. They don't care. They, they <laughs> Mommy doesn't pay for storage. Well, there was that... that that uh, app I called, I showed last week, Kid Picks, that limits the amount I of photos that, that, that your kid yeah. that your kids can take on yeah. your photos. So yeah, it's called Trunks, and I, I've looked into their um, security. Wow. It's relatively good. I mean, I think they'll be around. Um, they're not like a fly-by-night company nobody's ever heard of before. Um, but yeah, you get two gigabytes extra for every friend you invite. So if you want to do that, or you know, invite yourself with a different, um, so it's for life too. So Trunks, T R U N. Yeah. X. When they say life, of course, they mean the life of trunks, not your life. Right. They mean they're going to kill you as soon as they run out of space. That's what they uh, mean. And that, so, and that, so that's always a cause for concern. But that's why we don't use just one service. Yes. So, yeah. So, trunks, I use Flickr. I use... Um, Google Photos. Google Photos is the one that I just do not care at all. I never, it's, I never go in and delete anything. They really, have everything. you don't even think about and, it. And you know, maybe people are more um, concerned with the photos they have. What people are, what Google's using. We've talked about Google's that not using them. What would they do with them? Um, they they would don't make watch your photos. Of all of our face and develop their facial recognition. Well, they can do that. So, so what? They can find is, us when the zombies come. When the zombies come, you didn't tell me there were zombies. <laughs> now I'm worried. Well, uh, there's a couple of things I should mention. If you are an Amazon Prime oh, member, yeah. they have unlimited mm -hmm. free storage on the Amazon cloud. If you buy Microsoft's or subscribe to Microsoft's Office 365, as part of your subscription, you also get unlimited OneDrive storage. And OneDrive, Microsoft has a great OneDrive app that's both for the iPhone and the iPad. And it can be turned on to automatically copy photos. But it can save anything, as many of these solutions can. Yeah, OneDrive um, was the other one that I wanted to I talk like about. OneDrive. Yeah, because I have put photos on there because I used to have a PC and I used that. So they have a pretty uh, nice interface, too. You it's know, really it's, interesting you to see Microsoft do this because... I mean, basically, they're 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 making a really strong play for Apple users. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, I have it automatic. My camera automatically uploaded. Oh, here's just files that I have, um, and then yeah. So my camera rolls on there too. They're all the same pictures. You'll see them again and again. <laughs> so what I probably need to go through and like delete this picture of the tick that I don't really need. You. I did all my tick research I needed to do. Yeah, and you then, should do that. Um, not the kind that has Lyme disease. The thing Definitely. to remind people of is that, oh, there's you and Marco, that's cute. The <laughs> thing to remind people of is that photos, either the Apple or the Google version, and car Carousel a little less so, but photos uh, don't copy other kinds of files. Dropbox does, mm -hmm. OneDrive does. Right. And OneDrive, if you have unlimited storage, is a, a great solution for documents and for uh, for music and for all sorts of stuff. I've a lot of stuff, as you can see, stored on my OneDrive, including... Now, can I get an Office 365 subscription for my Mac, or is that just for sure. Windows? Sure, anybody can. So, and then that would come And you get Office search. for the Mac. The new Office for the Mac is imminent, uh, so you would get that. Of course, it also means that you can use the iPad apps fully, mm -hmm. which is nice. I, and yeah. it's not expensive. Um, I think it's... Uh, what, what do I pay? I think 70 bucks a year, 72 mm. bucks a year for uh, up to five machines for the home version. So you can install it on your Mac, your PC. And I do. I use it on Windows and Mac. 
Um, and then unlimited storage on, on uh, OneDrive, I think, is a great deal. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon Prime is 100 bucks a year. You get a lot of other benefits with Amazon right. Prime as well, but uh, cloud storage for your photos is great. Yeah. The idea is this is a great backup. Don't trust anyone right. because they could go out of business, mm -hmm. but they're not all going to go out of business at once. And if they do, it's probably because the zombies got probably. here. Probably. And you also have to go through and delete your photos. They're not going to, just because you're uploading them to any of these sites doesn't mean that they're going to be deleted. Right, but with unlimited storage. Delete. You might as well. Might but as well it's still everything. hard to delete them. I Isn't think. it amazing? Well, I mean, delete them from your phone. You have oh, to delete oh. them from in, in, really in some cases, not with, not, that's the nice thing about Apple's photos. Right. Is it will do that for you. But uh, everything else, yeah, you have to manually delete them. And so then you have to go through recently delete it if you want to free up your storage immediately and delete from there. Yes, because right? it's just kind of like a trash can. Yeah. Recycle then, bin. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know the other thing that takes up space? What? Messages. Text messages, iMessages. Yeah. Because we send so many emojis. I'm crazy about the emojis, but they fill up space. So that's when I go to the storage and look at what's taking up a lot of space. For me, it's a lot of messages. Yes. So now I, I, I want to keep my messages. I don't want to um, get rid of those. Right. They have, you know, the secrets to my life in them. Um, so here's one thing that I found that I could do, and you tell me if this is a, if you have a better solution. Okay. Um, I can back them up through text message forwarding. Oh, that's a good so, idea. So um, I'll go to settings. I think you can show. And then messages right here. And then text message forwarding. I'm not going to click that because I believe it has my phone number on there. Um, but yeah, that's where. Um, so allow your iPhone text messages to also be sent and received on other devices signed into your iMessage account. So then you have to go into your Mac um, and or I presume it would send it to a PC too, um, if people use PCs, which of course they do. Actually, more people use. <laughs> somebody just pointed out in the chat room. This is absolutely true. More iPhone users and iPad users are PC it, users yeah. or Windows users than Mac users. And probably more now. So yeah. Um, so yeah. Now this doesn't have my phone number. You can see the next screen just says that's my Black Widow's MacBook Pro. That's what she's called. Um, and yeah. Are you the go. Black Widow? I'm the Black Widow. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and so then they're all there. And I have a ton of space on my Mac. I don't know if people are worried about space on their Mac. This isn't going to solve the problem. But do you have a better solution for backing up your... No, but I do have an addendum to this, which is that messages will also store uh, images and so forth in, in an inaccessible place. Mm -hmm. People always email us saying, you know, I plugged my iPhone or iPad into my uh, computer and I looked at storage and there's this big orange section called other. What is that? It could be gigabytes. Right. It's many things, but among other things, it's cached iMessages and images or, or large files that came as attachments to your messages. Oh, but you can't really there, I don't them. know of a way to, the only way I know of, and I'd love to hear from somebody if you've got a better fix, and I think Apple, by the way, has fixed this in recent versions of iOS. The only way I know of is to actually start over, to refresh the phone, reset it, erase mm -hmm. everything, sync everything back onto it. And you, when you back up your phone, obviously you're not backing up other. Right. So when you restore it at that point, uh, you'll sit, recover that space. Right. Yeah, I see 64 megabytes of uh, saved messages, so uh, that's uh, not an insignificant amount. But it's but compared to the 128 gigs I have on this thing, it's not going to kill me. So Scooter X says uh, iMessage is Mac OS and iOS only, of course. But this is text message forwarding, not just iMessage forwarding. So does that mean because you have to be signed into your iMessage account? Do you think these are all text messages? I think yeah. Well, it doesn't all... matter because it's all in messages once it comes to an iPhone. Right. Or an okay. iPad. So it's all the people. From so it could my be Android SMSs friends. or it could be data messages from okay. other iOS and Mac users. Doesn't matter. It ends up as an iPhone user. It ends up in your messages okay. app. So if you have other solutions for uh, clearing up the storage secrets that I might not even know about that Leo has forgotten we to tell me about share today, them. Uh, yeah, send them to iOS today at twit.tv because I am always in search of ways to free up the space because that is the worst feeling to just. Be Free about to the take a space, picture, man. and then it says, you know, you you can't, and it's just then the moment's gone, and you. It's so it, it happened. I'm not kidding. Yesterday, yeah. After Twit, and I felt bad because somebody wanted to get a picture of uh, me and them, and uh, we get, you know, what we do is we give the camera, the phone, in this case, to uh, our intern. And the intern said, "I'm sorry, there's no space." Sad. Oh, sad. And if you're on a trip. Yeah. And you're seeing the crown jewels. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be back. You want to make sure there's space before you go. Yes. Our show today brought to you by, can I do that now? Yeah. Braintree. Please. Yeah. This is if, a sponsor. This is a sponsor. Ad. If you, are, <laughs> if, if you are a mobile app developer and you know one of the things that is hard to do right if you're doing it on your own is mobile payments. Frankly, you'd be nuts to do it on your own because there's Braintree. 
Uh, you you don't want to get involved in security, working with credit card companies. Braintree's got all of that nailed. With just a few lines of code, you can add payments from everything. Apple Pay, you bet. But also Venmo and credit cards and PayPal. And you know what else? Bitcoin even. Your, your, your users will love it because it's a great experience for them. It's fluid. It's easy. You'll love it because it's so easy to implement. Plus, Braintree has fast payments. They are great on security. And they make it easy for you with clear documentation and excellent support. SDKs in .NET, Node.js, Java, Perl, PHP, Python, Ruby, Android, iOS, JavaScript clients. Yes, you can even do it there. If you don't have time, they'll do the integration for you. They'll walk you through it. Developers... Braintree has it nailed for you. It'd be insane to write this yourself. Use Braintree. And if, and if you need the boss's approval, have them go to braintreepayments.com slash iOS today, or you do it yourself. They've got a sandbox there. You can see how it would work with your app. They also have great support, lots of information on their V.0 SDK. And if you go to braintreepayments.com slash iOS today, you'll get your first $50,000 in transactions fee free now if you need a little more incentive well let me just tell you some of their users uber uses braintree i mean that is the key to uber's success is the easy payment you'd get to your point of uh, where you're going and the driver says thanks and you get out of the car braintree handles that lyft uses braintree airbnb hotels tonight i love it when competitors use a product because that means it's the best in class it is braintreepayments.com slash iOS today. Give it a shot. I think you'll love it. And don't forget, $50,000 in payments fee free from Braintree. So I have got one piece of news and three rumors. Got it. There's a lot. This is the rumor time. You know it why? Is, there's no news? Well, no, because September we'll see new iPhones. October we'll see new iPads. It's almost certain that at least the iPhones are already in production in China. So Apple can very tightly control uh, leaks from Apple's headquarters, you, you'll get fired. <laughs> and they have lots of ways of finding out. But it's a little harder when they get to China. The suppliers, there's lots of them. The, the factory, the factory workers, they just can't control it. So you do start seeing pictures, information about new devices. This is about the time that happens. Yes, yeah, so we'll start with the news. The, okay. re the real news uh, that, you know, a couple weeks ago that Jeep was vulnerable to hacking. They did yep. that. Uh, and then on Friday, the OnStar system also was vulnerable to hacking. So you have to, if you have that, Patch your iOS app. That's yeah, it turns out that's the OnStar app that's vulnerable. Yes, the remote. So get link. the and 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 the GM has updated that. So just get the latest version of the app uh, on your phone. Uh, not by the way, n these hacks haven't appeared in the wild yet, mm -hmm. but they are going to be talked about this week at Black Hat and DEF CON, the big security conferences in Vegas. The folks who created these hacks, like Charlie Miller, who did the Jeep hack, will be presenting and presumably giving more information about how these hacks work. It may be that shortly after those talks, you do start seeing these. Yeah. You, don't, you don't want someone controlling your car remotely. I would definitely update your app. If you have a Jeep, Fiat, or any uh, Fiat Chrysler with Uconnect, uh, there is a recall. a recall. As you know, 1.4 million vehicles. Please do that. But the OnStar is not a recall. There's a patch. No, it's easy that, to fix. That was Sammy Camcar, yep. who uh, yep. was the researcher who discovered that. So, yes, and that. Now, here's for the rumors. Rumors. Um, let's start with the Apple TV rumors. Have you heard those? We'll see that allegedly in September okay. when we see the new iPhone. Okay, okay. John Pachkowski, very good at BuzzFeed, had that yes. rumor. But we talked about this on Twit, and uh, and uh, uh, Nate uh, Oliveris Giles, who was one of our guests, he writes for the Wall Street Journal, made a very good point. He said, of course, this Apple TV is ready. It's been ready for months. Mm -hmm. That's not what's holding it up. What's holding it up is the deals with networks, local uh. stations, and cable producers, you know, content producers. And no one can predict when those deals will be done. I believe, and I think Nate believed as well, that Apple TV was ready for June. We all thought they'd announce right, in June. Uh, the, the hardware, I'm sure the hardware is ready. I don't think, I think John's absolutely right. The hardware is ready. But what we don't know and what we won't ever know until Apple finally says, yes, it's done, is when they've got those deals and they're ready to announce. And so I think it's very likely that the hardware's done. But so you Doesn't don't, mean know, you'll you don't see think it. September. No one knows. Well, no, it could be. Just no one knows. Yeah. No one knows. It's, I mean, we, the rumor was very strong that they would announce in June. But I think that what happened is that they couldn't get deals with the big companies. Right. And it didn't happen. 
So the next two rumors come from James Cook at Business Insider, and the first one is uh, that uh, Apple's developing an NVNO. Uh, NVNO. Yeah, mobile virtual network operator. I haven't heard this one. This is that Apple would become a cell company. Right. So that it's similar to Google Fi, like kind of the same thing, right? right? You, they would you'd pay Apple for your service, and then it would be better because they'd be getting it from a lot of different places. They'd be finding the best network. Is that now, what they are going to do? That they said that's the this rumor? is the rumor, and it's at least Google's six years away. Google's the first to ever do this. Right. That's six a, years that away. Could could take five to six years I don't if think I can hold it happens my at all. Long. Could you hold your breath? That's about that long? the worst rumor I ever heard. Maybe. <laughs> In 2021, we'll, Apple will do this, but maybe not. Right. Yes. Okay, good rumor. Right, and then it gets picked up everywhere. <laughs> But everybody, they're so excited. Yeah, Apple's I think because the other one came from James Cook too, and I, I don't know James Cook. Well, he Do you might know have James some. Cook? No, I don't. He well, might the other one, deep, um, deep, uh, he deep. might. I mean, from Business Insider was the one that you have heard that that Siri's going to change voicemail next year forever. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about that. The idea would be that there'll be a new kind of voicemail service powered by Siri, which would allow people to leave you a message, and then Siri would transcribe it, create a text version of that message, and message it to right. you. which it solves that problem, which is people like to leave voicemails because they're easy or to leave, but then people don't like to get voicemails. Like, that's not yeah. the way that you want to receive the information. Yeah. I'd rather read the information, but I'd rather speak the information. So... Do you want this right now? <laughs> Get a Google voice number, voice.google.com. That's what it does. Well, we were talking about this before, and I was saying that, uh, you know, traditionally, Google Voice has not transcribed things you very know, well. Last week, this is the strangest news story I've ever heard, Google announced that it's 49% better. Not 50%. Right. That would be wrong. 49% better. And I, I actually will vouch for it. I use Google Voice all the time. I love it. Uh, when you get uh, left a message on Google Voice, one of the options, you don't have to turn it on, is that they will transcribe that message and email it to you and or text it to you. And I always do that because I'm on the air. I can't really listen to a message, but I can see what it's about. And in the past, the transcriptions have been bad. If you've ever looked at YouTube transcriptions, it's a little better than that, but not much. Mm -hmm. Well, 49% better. I think it is. Uh, I feel like the message is even if not perfect, are, are accurate enough for me to know what the message is about, who's calling. Uh, that's plenty for me. You have a message I have there? one. This is, you know, you can call us and leave a voicemail. Okay. And, um, this is a this Google is, voice And I get number. them to my, to my phone text. Yeah. So this is uh, from Tom in North Carolina. And he says... You don't, don't have to show, show it. We'll read it. might yeah. have his phone number yeah. on there. We don't want to share that. Uh, I'm having an issue with my phone just shutting down completely. Was told by a rapper at the local Apple store. Probably a rep, okay. <laughs> Probably a rep, yep. that it was an issue with iOS 8 tonight for and would be resolved by the High West 91. And if you could provide me any other suggestions as to what to do, I've done a fast or not a hard reset and dumber walk, thanks, goodbye. Okay, so there's some errors there. <laughs> but mostly, Admittedly, do you know what he's asking? Yeah, you kind of know what he's talking what about. What is it? Well, uh, <laughs> you, we just read it. It's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. The point is, first of all, we should play that message because we don't. Okay, he might have yeah, said right. the mm -hmm. word. When mm -hmm. you leave a message, sometimes you say the word three times. Yes. Uh, you get it wrong the first two times. So we don't know. That might actually be a pretty good transcription of what the sound was like. I still think it's good enough that you get a. Uh, you, you know who called. You know what he's right. calling about. Yes. You maybe don't know exactly what the question right. is, but you get enough. And, uh, and that's now. Right, that's, that's now. available now, and it's to the, totally free. Yes. And if you use an iPhone, you can use it. All you have to do is sign up for a Google Voice number, and that's the number you give out. Uh, I like it that you could continue to use your iPhone number, that Siri will do it. Right. We don't know if Apple will charge for this service. We don't know anything about it. And we know one thing we know is it's not going to be available until iOS 9. Right. So that's sometime next year. I think James Cook said that Apple employees are testing it now. So he that's, probably knows someone the, at Apple and out. they have some, yeah, yeah and he got yeah. a, yeah, something. Yeah, so that's how it leaked out. I think it'll be um, interesting uh, and might not be better. There I mean, are many who, services that do this already. Uh, the real problem with voice transcription, especially of phone calls, is the quality of the phone call, really. I mean, you've heard, right. and sometimes it's hard for you to understand yeah. what the voicemail says. Right. So a computer, so the fact that they're even getting close, I get uh, voicemail transcri transcriptions from uh, Google uh, that are almost perfect, many, very often. Right. If it's someone that you know well, you you know, it's, it, they're better, you know, they're more accurate. The other thing that's... Abby here, always wants more money, and I can tell, I just, you know... <laughs> Sorry, I was reading the transcription, I don't know, you want a rapper? Absolutely. <laughs>
A rapper? I got it for you, Abby. Uh, ASAP Rocky, how's that? <laughs> well, He's got a dollar sign in the name. <laughs> The thing, uh, the other thing that Siri was, will allegedly be able to do is tell certain people uh, why you can't come to the phone. Yes, you can have her give them messages right. and things like that. So, for example, when my husband just called a second ago, you know, I could have had Siri just but say... But you do that when you're with a watch right now. I can't yeah. talk, right? Right, yeah. yeah. So you can have automatically. canned messages. Yeah. But Siri would do it automatically. Right, but that seems confusing. We'll see. we'll like, see. I don't know if I'd want to set that every time and, you know, accidentally tell someone, you know. You know, I don't like talking too much about rumors because, first of all, we don't know if they're true. Right. Uh, we don't know what the full feature set mm -hmm. is. We really don't know much. Right. And uh, this one is particularly useless since, in fact, this service already exists from a variety of other providers. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, is, do you find Siri's uh, transcription is a flawless state of the art right on? Siri? Yeah. Uh, no. You, yeah. No, 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 no. no. Um, I would prefer Alexa <laughs> to do it. <laughs> Alexa's good. Yeah, she. Maybe Alexa she should have our, better, uh, but, our voice. And she, yeah, because she does transcribe because you can add things to your grocery list, right. and she's very. She's actually much more accurate. I, than I actually Siri. use Siri a lot uh, for when I'm like in the car for quick. Well, not driving. Of course, we wouldn't do that. For quick uh, messages, sometimes I'll use it to reply to a lot. If I have a lot of email, I'll go through it and I'll dictate it. In right. fact, you've probably received emails from me that look like they were written by a robot. They were written by Siri. Well, that's the problem. I think Siri's pretty accurate, but if you're using it when you're driving, like send a text message to Leo, I'm going to be late, then yeah. you, you can't read it. No, like, you That's send the it. problem. Yeah. You just have to guess. Yeah. Dang, you autocorrect. <laughs> All right, who else is this show brought to you by? Blue Apron, ladies and gentlemen. We know you love to eat. I do. Who doesn't love to eat? You know, I, I love to eat, and I love to cook, but what I don't love, and I often don't have the time to, for to do, especially after a long work day, is shop. Blue Apron solves that by shipping you fresh, delicious ingredients to your door. They come in a refrigerated box, and they're amazing. You will be cooking incredible meals there's no wastage because you get just the right amount of chives or parsley or garlic or whatever it is you need you'll be cooking really innovative stuff it's great for date night it's great to impress people and you know once you've cooked it you actually feel pretty confident that you could do it again that a recipe card of course is a great help for less than ten dollars per meal and by the way they have family plans with kid-friendly ingredients so the whole family can eat well. And you know what? You can even get the kids to prepare the meals together. You'll work with them. Blue Apron will make sure you never get a box that you're not ready to receive. Their menus change all the time. They'll never send you the same meal twice. Each meal is about 500 to 700 calories per serving. Delish. I cannot tell you how good they are. They're fabulous. And they will give, they have vegetarian. They'll work with your dietary preferences. You're, those recipe cards are great. You can com combine them and, and now you've got a great recipe book. You can even do those recipes online, by the way, if you want to check it out at blueapron.com slash twit. Uh, they've got all the recipes, all the menus online, even videos on how to do various cooking techniques. How about some crispy catfish with Sicilian eggplant caponata tonight? Mm -hmm. Would you like that? Mm -hmm. Or uh, summer corn and bell pepper pizza with telegio cheese and fresh thyme. Huh? You don't have the time, you got the time now. No shopping needed, delicious ingredients straight to your door. In fact, we're gonna get you your first two meals free if you go to blueapron.com slash twit. Ooh, I like that spiced meatballs with garlic toast. My parents just signed up for the Blue Apron. Did they? Did yes. they love it? They love it, they already do love it. They're already getting it. And uh, my mom said that my dad actually helps cook, which he never has done in the um, 45 years yeah. that they've been together. And I don't know about you, but I get to the grocery store and I don't. I haven't done the meal plan. I, haven't, I mean, I kind of know what I want to make. And, but what you end up doing is making the same thing over and over, you know, because I know exactly what ingredients I need for my spaghetti mm -hmm. sauce or, you know, my uh, chicken piccata. So I just make that again and again. Blue Apron is going to really expand your horizon. It never sends the same meal twice. Love it. I really love it. All right, so we have a few questions from oh, you. I love that part of the show. Uh, you can email questions if you have them to iOS Today at twit.tv, or um, you can leave them on our subreddit, which is reddit slash iOS Today. Uh, and she left out some stuff, but you get that. <laughs> really? Did I? Yeah. Reddit.com slash r slash iOS Today. So r, yes. There's a few there extra little things in there. Uh, and you can call us, uh, and you know I'll get it right away on my phone. <laughs> Sort and her of. watch, <laughs> and her iPad, and so, it'll jam up her messages, <laughs> and uh, she'll the, curse your name. I, I will. The number is 757-504-IPAD. And if you were the person from North Carolina that left that message, let Thank me know uh, if we 
um, answered it correctly. That was the question. Oh, I don't we have. Oh, OK. <laughs> I will listen to the message in human, I think, okay, human transcribe you will. Yes, it if you I'll want. I'll play it for you. Yeah. Uh, and by so, the way, always start the message with your first name in the city. And try to keep it under 30 seconds, or we won't be able to use it on the air. And right. I like to use the audio if we can. Yeah. But, but that, if you would do that, that will make it a lot easier. Right. Uh, so Danny writes, I was wondering if you had an app, any app recommendations for those times when you want to unwind after a long, stressful day. Fast-paced, <sighs> competitive games are great, but sometimes you just need to get mellow. Mmm. So we recommended Prune last prune week. Is great. Do you remember I, that game? Prune's the kind of game you just want to take off your bra, sit back, and prune some trees. Really? <laughs> oh, I made up the bra part, but you could. But the pruning of the trees. Well, where did that come from? <laughs> Isn't that the first thing? Come on, admit it. <laughs> you kick off your shoes, you take off your bra, and you prune some trees. Uh, <laughs> That's what I do. So here's the app. <laughs> Here. Uh, this is fun. You know what's nice? There's no timer. No. I don't like timers. I think that stresses me out a little bit. Yes. I have to say, though, I am a little stressed out in this game. I've, I've gotten to a level. I got that level. You got this one. Uh, yeah, this, and then the yeah, wind starts over. up, and it gets harder. And you know what? Frankly, it gets harder and harder. And yeah. I... Where's my game? No, you got to get around that sun, that right. giant ball oh, they call the sun. Now it's growing. Yeah, so you, yeah. Yeah, you prune them away so that they go towards the sun, which I guess is that way, and then they'll die if you cut off too much, which is, I think, what I just did. You know what my new thing is? I download games and I only play the first few levels <laughs> because they're the easy levels, so they're very satisfying. Like Angry Birds 2, have you played that yet? I haven't, no. I'm sure it gets really hard, but the first few levels are really easy and very satisfying. <laughs> and this is what you play to relax? Well, that's the point, is when it gets hard, no, I throw it away. I delete it. But if you and by the way, it's free because they expect that you'll get to the hard part and buy stuff. Right. It's got a lot of in-app purchases. Uh, I've seen some very negative reviews of Angry Birds too. I think it's a, it's great. It's fun. They've uh, really upped the ante on the artwork, don't you think? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you only play the first three levels, it's extraordinarily sad. Here, I'll show you. Would it spoil it if I play the first few levels for no. you? All right, I'll well, start. You guys just close your eyes if you think it'll spoil you. <laughs> no spoilers here. Uh, it's loading, it's logging in, sorry, blah, blah, blah. Don't you, but don't you think like the, so Rovio has really only had one successful game, Angry Birds. They made the bad piggies. That was okay. But I, you know, everybody's been wondering, when are they going to do a follow-up to Angry Birds that's as good as Angry Birds? And I think this is pretty fun. Same idea, you're trying to get three stars. You're firing birds from a slingshot. Birds have a variety of capabilities. The storyline is the pigs have stolen your eggs and you gotta get it back by destroying the pigs by shooting birds at them. The first few levels make it really easy because they give you arrows that you have to, now watch, listen, this is so satisfying. Oh man, that felt good. I feel so mellow now. Isn't that awesome? Well, guys sometimes maybe need some outlets. Okay, well, maybe that's we what Danny We don't feel mellow until we've destroyed for. some pigs. Um, I have another app that might be even more mellow. It's called Calm. I think we've talked about oh. it before Oh, this will mellow you out. It also has uh, an Apple Watch app, too, so that you can remind yourself to meditate. Calm, C-A-L-M, yes. dot and com, Yes, and so you go learn the basics in the seven days of Calm, like what is Welcome mindfulness. Welcome to the seven days of Calm, the seven. a free mindfulness program oh. designed to bring more calm, clarity, and joy into your life. Maybe you've joined us because you're looking for a way to lessen the stress and anxiety you feel on a day-to-day -day basis. Perhaps you'd like to improve your health and enjoy a more restful sleep. Isn't her voice just For many of even? us, these are <sighs> difficult goals Some to of the attain meditation apps because we're experiencing not, more stress. So we'll stop and that for now, and maybe uh, come later. Um, do you have another one too? There's don't one you? called this I think it's Headspace. Have you tried that one? I. Both of these are capitalizing on a, a, what's an interesting movement. All of a sudden, it started in Silicon Valley. Everybody's meditating. Mm -hmm. Remember, uh, maybe you don't. When I was a kid, transcendental meditation was the big thing. The Beatles did it. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. You, you, they, you would go, you would bring him a piece of fruit. He'd whisper your, his, your mantra into your ear. It was always Om. And then everybody would go, Om, Mani Padme Om. And you'd meditate. And this was a big thing in the 60s and the 70s. And then it kind of faded away. Well, Silicon Valley's rediscovered it. And entrepreneurs like Loic Lemur are singing its praises. Jason Calacanis is an investor. The least calm guy I know in calm.com. In calm, com. he's an investor in calm. Uh, because it, people are starting to realize there's real benefits to even... There's science behind it. Yes, 10 minutes a day 
of just calm. So there are a number of these apps that uh, they're all free to start. They always have in-app purchases, as does Calm.com yeah. and I think Headspace too. But they teach you how to meditate. I like Headspace a lot. That's my personal favorite. But Calm is great too. I I actually bought a year membership to Calm.com as well. And do you use it? No. Do you? Maybe you need to be reminded on your Apple Watch. <laughs> I'm too busy. I don't have time to meditate. Uh, there was another one that I talked about on the, one of the first shows I did is Stop, Breathe, and Think. Uh, and oh, yeah, it yeah. And similar, um, you know, and you can check your progress. And this is also uh, good for kids, too, because um, meditation is great for kids. They started it in schools, and uh, you can this, use this one to, like, just say how you're feeling. Um, how are you feeling? I'm feeling glad. And you can get stickers. I'm feeling sad. Once you complete all your meditations. I feel guilty for not meditating more. <laughs> so you found Headspace, or is that just the website? Uh, the well, start with the website, because uh, they, they describe a lot of stuff. They've got cute videos and stuff. But I'm pretty sure, pretty sure there's an app. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's uh, only a website. Well, it's 10 days for free. And you can do it absolutely on the iPad via the uh, website. Right. So Headspace.com. Uh, See, he's, he's calm. Right, so can we'll put you, links to these in our show notes yeah. at um, twit.tv. This, isn't, this isn't a game. I, so did he want games or? He just wanted anything to be mellow. He didn't say game or anything. He, he just anything. said just He said mellow. the competitive games, are so, they're fine, but yeah. sometimes you just need to get mellow. He said any app recommendations. A lot of us work out, go to the gym, um, and this is kind of, they call it a gym membership for your mind. I think this probably is a very good idea. We live in very stressful times. And, and especially as people who use a lot of electronics, mm -hmm. it's very easy to uh, zone out on your iPhone or your iPad. Right. Uh, it's probably a better idea to zone out with your eyes closed right. and do a little meditation. I, I actually thought of that, like if I could change the Facebook app so that whenever I touched it, like it would go to Calm instead of Facebook. Wouldn't that be like good? That's maybe sometimes what I need. But Facebook, do you find, I mean, you, uh, when I'm on Facebook, it is, you do kind of zone out. I don't know how good it is for you. Right, I don't know. It depends on how. I think, um, I interviewed a, a psychologist about that. It really depends on how you look at Facebook. Like, as long as what, what she said was, don't just go and look. You should leave something there, too. If you're participating, that would help. Um, and then also just who your friends are. Are there people that you actually interact with that are your friends? Or are they just, you know, long-distance people? I that, feel that, like there's a certain amount of judgment that I get from psychologists when you talk about the fact that you use a lot of technology. Well, no, she is a fan of Facebook. She uses Facebook okay. a lot. She has a podcast. It's the, oh, the Savvy well. Psychologist. The, oh, the Savvy Psychologist. The psycholo Quick and Dirty Tips, yes. <laughs> oh, and I love that. Yeah, she is, yeah, so she yeah. is a supporter of Facebook, and these are good ways that you can use it. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I don't um, know. But I think what he said... At, after a long, stressful day, uh, I think um, what I have read is mm. that as long as you do something, like the reason why people always say, like, oh, I have to have a cocktail after work every That's day. That's probably not the thing it's to do. It's maybe not the healthiest thing, but all you need, it's like the habit. So if maybe you go for a run or you meditate or Going whatever you do. Going for a run is meditative. Yeah. Working out is meditative. So whatever it is, like maybe it's Angry Birds, but if it's one thing that you do every day to change from work to home, but if you do it every it day. It helps if your uh, partner or your spouse is willing to do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I asked Lisa, I said, hey, let's meditate 10 minutes a day. She said, never. So I, <laughs> she's a little high powered. She's like very energetic. But she, her, she's you know what, she does though. meditate. She gets up at six in the morning every morning and, and gets on the exercise bicycle for an hour. And I think that that's absolutely her right. meditation. Right? Yeah. yeah. I know if I bother, she bites my head off. So. <laughs> She must be meditating. I have another email from Tom. This no, is Tom. I'm just joking. She doesn't. In fact, she says every day, come, come with me. Bicycle. Bicycle. And I go, no, I think I'll sleep in. You That's exercise meditative. too. I do. Uh, do you want to hear Tom's question? Yes, Tom go ahead. from Linwood, Washington asks, if you borrow someone's iPhone or iPad, you can find out about that person without unlocking oh. the device. Oh, you can. That's true. Uh, just ask Siri, yeah. what What's is your... my name or who yeah. what am I or who owns yeah. this iPad um, or iPhone? And it'll give out a lot of information. Do you think this is a security issue and is there something that you can turn off? Yeah. So uh, we, I've talked a lot on i5 for the iPhone about this because someone asked. And someone also made, gave the tip that if you keep that on then and you lose your iPad, that someone, or your iPhone, someone could use it to return it to you. But I think there are better ways to get your iPhone or iPad back just through Find My Phone. Um, I do think this is a security risk. I do tell people to turn this off it's because on, it has your phone number. It has everything. on intentionally. Apple's very aware of it. It's not that they're not aware of it. 
most people want it because they want to be able to say things like, hey Siri, you know, what's my next appointment and so forth without unlocking the device. Right. So it is not a bug or a flaw. Apple's very well aware of it. It's been in many versions of iOS, but you can always turn it off. Yes, you can. Let's show how you can turn it off. I uh, leave so it on. I actually like it. And, you know, if you get my phone number, big deal. So you go to settings. Uh, and then you go to passcode, or for an iPhone 6, it'll be touch ID and passcode. And then you go there, and then uh, don't show this, because I'm going to enter my secret password. Very secret. Uh, okay, now you can go back. And then, uh, so allow access when locked. So I can allow access to the Today screen, the notification screen, and Siri. And then if I just want to get rid of that, I just press that button. Yeah, I have to point out, uh, many uh, people also feel like there's a security flaw because your phone is locked and notifications are put right up there right, on the phone. Right, so you can get an email. But that's a convenience. If you yeah. don't like it, here's right. how you turn it's it off. It's always a trade-off between convenience. Yeah. Now I have a question here. Can you show my screen again? Do you call these sliders or buttons? That's a good question. I'd and say I, would, I always slid them, and then someone well, pointed out that them. you just tap them. You know, slider actually technically is something else. So okay. I guess we have to call them buttons. Right. But the don't. slider is how you used to like, open the iPhone. Right. It's like not like a, a push button. So, yeah. We need a settings, new name for that. Code. How about a toggle? A toggle. Maybe that's what they're called. Yeah. Well, I'll call them a they're toggle. They're fun to press. Actually, what do, uh, I'm sure there's a name in the uh, UI designer in Xcode. What do they call them in uh, Xcode? <laughs> Probably toggles. I'm going to guess toggles. Okay. Toggle. I'm going Jack with Rand toggles, Alex. Toggle. What is a toggle? Um, hmm. Did you know Alex Trebek is 75 years old? <sighs> I he did not know that. Great. He gives me hope. I might still be doing this in 20 years. Because mm -hmm. if Alex Trebek could, I can. Yes. I just got to meditate a little bit more. <laughs> so send us your and questions. Get a, a more relaxed bra. Send us your voicemails. Um, ask Leo why he's talking about his bra so much. I am not sure. Uh, <laughs> I've heard that's something women do. I don't know. And uh, we're going to have our app cap, which is our favorite app of the week. Get the hats out. Yes. App cap time first. right after this word from lynda.com. I love lynda.com. I've known Linda Wyman, the founder of lynda.com, for more than a decade. You probably met her. She used to come to the Screen Savers show. She was her passion in the world was teaching people how to use technology. We kind of share that passion. She built lynda.com as a way for you to go somewhere and get a course, an online video course, in pretty much any subject in technology. I mean, now there are over 3,700 videos there on everything. You know, when the day Windows 10 came out, they had Windows 10 Essentials on the website because they work with the publishers and make sure that those videos are ready day and day. And by the way, these are not rushed out. They use great professionals who are excellent teachers but also work in the field. So you're going to learn from people like Burt Monroy, Nick Bratzi, people who know Photoshop, who know coding, who know how to use Excel and PowerPoint and Microsoft Office. And this is just a great place to learn. Whether you're trying to get more skills for your work, look, there's Edge, Windows 10 Essential Training. Whether you're trying to uh, just have more fun at your hobby, if it's photography or um, or Excel, maybe your hobby's Excel. I think some people have spreadsheets as a hobby. Could be. It could happen. Don't mock it. Lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. Now, I know a lot of people want to become experts in, oh, Ben Long's an old friend, one of the great photographers. I love Ben. And when he starts talking about composition, his passion and knowledge really come through. By the way, every Lynda.com uh, video course is divided up in chunks so you can watch it in bite-sized pieces or go all the way through if you want. It's your choice. They also have full transcriptions so you can search the transcription for something you want to learn and jump right to that part of the video. If you're looking for app development courses, they have, let's, let me give you a couple. This is one I'm going to take up and running with Node.js. That's, uh, that's the programming language, the JavaScript uh, framework that we use on our website. Our website's written in it. Uh, building data-driven apps with the iOS. SDK and SQ Lite. There's also fantastic uh, multi-course series. I've mentioned many times there's SQL Lite. There it is. Building data-driven apps. Bill Weinman. Uh, there's also the Code Clinic. I've talked about this many times. I love this idea. You've got experts in every language taking a look at a, a single code challenge and so showing you how to solve it in that language, whether it's C++, C Sharp, Java. Uh, they also have PHP, Python, Ruby. They've added now JavaScript, C, R, which is a hot new language, and Swift, Apple's new uh, programming language for iOS and OS X apps. You're going to love lynda.com. You pay one flat monthly rate and get the run of the place, which is excellent. And let me tell you, 
Right now, we've got 10 days free, so you can, if you want to see it, get an idea of what it would be like to be a member, go to lynda, L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash I-O-S today and sign up for your free 10-day trial. L-Y-N-D-A, lynda dot com slash I-O-S today. Sign up for your 10-day trial. Take a course. Take two courses. Take as many courses as you can get done in 10 days. Lynda dot com. We thank them so much for their support. They actually pay for the hats. Oh, yeah. And that is not an inconsequential amount of money. No. I should be in the Veterans Day parade with this You hat. really should. Mm -hmm. if, and what, if, for, I should have been at the Rivertown Revival in this you hat. You look good in that mm -hmm. leather uh, top hat. This, mm -hmm. this actually, if you look closely, it would be a Veterans Day parade in St. Petersburg because all these insignia are the Soviet Army. Oh. And I actually got this in St. Petersburg for a song, a few bucks. Somebody told me that these aren't actually Soviet Army pins. Well, originally they were, after the fall of the Soviet Union, but the tourists ate them up, so they started making new ones. <laughs> I assumed, oh, these must be surplus. Aren't they fun? They, yeah. Yeah. I got this in, uh, well, it must have been 2008, 2007. Mm. I went there with Henry. So I, this is one of my favorite hats. If you don't look at it closely, it looks like it could be in the 8th uh, yeah, eight, Infantry. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah, exactly. All right, well, uh, this is the part of the show where we wear funny hats. Yes. And we talk about our favorite app of the week. It's the App Cap Awards. Yes. So uh, mine is Stack the Countries. I'm thinking this isn't for you. This is probably for your kids. I don't know. I still I need to learn more about geography. So while you were gone, um, I did Stack the States on one of the shows that I did with Georgia Dad. And you know what? I've played that game. Stack the States? Yeah, because yeah. Michael plays it yeah. all the time. It's yeah. part of their curriculum. I think they learned about it at school. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, but now I just discovered that they have Stack it's the Countries. really fun. Which is, yeah, because I was playing with Georgia Dow, and she doesn't know a lot about U.S. geography being from Canada. She's Canada, and yeah. 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 Uh, so, She'd probably be good at this. Ready. Are you so ready? So it's a game and an educational. Yes, uh, it's fun and you learn stuff. So which, which country is located in Africa? The region of Africa. Lebanon, Syria, Singapore, or Tanzania? Yeah, you think Tanzania? Hint, hint. So, okay, so then Tanzania. This also, the countries are their actual size in relation, not actual size, but really? in relation Tanzania? to each other. Is that small? No, so the... Uh, what do you call that if they're in relation to each other? They're, they're scaled. They're scaled. They're, they're, they're scaled. So yeah. now um, I'm gonna. We have to balance them and get them above this thing here, so you can turn it. Um, it's kind of becomes Tetris with yeah, countries. Yeah, a little bit. So then, I mean, you can put it all the way here and just drop it. And I'm gonna drop it. Okay, so it's it that's where it's gonna be. And the next country will stack and stack, but you don't want to go over the line. It's like limbo. No, you want to go over oh, the line. Oh, you do. Which the country shares a border line. with Cameroon? Cameroon. The Central African Republic, Macedonia, Tajikistan, or Latvia? I think it's got to be the Central African Republic, That's Alex. What I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, that, so now you yeah. can see scale together. We are winners. So I think we can actually. Can you actually, turn it on its yeah, side? You can you turn and make it. And make it go over the line? Let's, Let's see. see. Let's go see. Go ahead and drop it. Megan Maroney, are whoa, you a whoa, ch whoa, whoa. Oh, oh no. no! We've lost the Central African Republic. We have. We um, don't know where it went. Yeah, that's so sad. Port-au-Prince is the capital of which country? Well, it could be the United States of America, Myanmar, Serbia, or Haiti. I thought it was the USA. <gasps> See, look how little Haiti is. Haiti is so compared small compared to uh, Tanzania. Yeah, so, yeah, then you just put it right there. See, it's nice it. to have that in scale, because kids get an yeah, idea. Yeah, it is. I think that's what I like about Are it. Are you playing this game for Annabella? I am. I hope she gets it. So you a. collect a country once you get Encore over the Angkor Wat is a landmark in which country? Cambodia, Niger, Equatorial Guinea, or India? Do we think Cambodia? Yes. Okay. <laughs> It's an Ooh, amazing temple Cambodia, I've always wanted to see. Cambodia, also smaller than I thought Oh, it, was. it is small. Well, you know, it's not that it, it's small. It's that Tanzania is so yeah. darn big. Right. Hey, okay. nice job. You balanced Somalia. that. Somali is the official language of which country? That should be fairly easy. Santa okay. Lucia, Somalia, right. I think China. this time we're going to do it. Oh, we're going to do it. Look, how big, look how big Somalia, Somalia is. Yeah. Wow. That is good, because, you know, in our maps, when we were growing up, they didn't always have no, things for scale. Yeah, United those, those uh, oh, do you think? No. No? What do you think? Try think? it. Like that. I didn't know you could get below the line. I thought you had to drop it from a great height. No. I think you're cheating. Maybe. Mommy. Oh, no, oh, no, oh! no. Almost ruined it for everybody. I you did. did. Ruin it for everybody. That's kind of like Angry Pigs. I did. Well, this is a fun game. I could keep playing, but um, and you learn something. Yeah, you do yeah. learn something. A lot of things, I uh, think. Yeah. It's fun. So it's free. There's also a paid version. Um, I think it's a dollar ninety nine. Totally worth it. Um, stack the countries too. Uh, 
great apps. And after you stack the countries, maybe after you've you, learned something, after you've learned something, <laughs> take off your bra and slash and burn. It's called Angel Stone, brand new, just came out a couple of days ago. Uh, you could play. What's fun about it? You could play it on your PC and play the same account on your PC as you play on oh. your on your uh, iPad. Looks great on the iPad. And you know, one of my bugaboos. Uh, about iPad games is the user interface. I think a lot of time, Not the sex, uh, sex it's too hard. I mean. You know, you have to you pretend you've got a joystick and, and something like that. So this game actually, let's show you battle. Let's battle. Sure. We're going to go to the Ruined Village, Act One, and we're going to start right there. Yes, you want me to go there to there. Start. Okay. And by the way, you get these rune stones, which give you new capabilities. Uh, in a hurry to go off and die already. You won't last long without setting your skills. Oh, I don't want to set skills. All right, all right. Uh, let's see. I've got a level one lightning crush. That'll be in the up. I've got a level one slash. That'll be the down. Level one venom wind. That'll be right. Let's go play. So the skills are activated by one of the compass points. Okay. Yeah. You move by tapping. And there's not a lot, frankly, the narration you could probably go without. But you see, it's, you know, if you, you like Diablo, do you like uh, these top-down fighting games? Looks boom, boom. Do you like being, you can choose your character. You can be a mage, a war, I'm a berserker. I'm a big, let's see the size of my sword. I am a big, big berserker. There's some more enemies there. Let's give them one of these. Boom, boom, boom. You're playing a, that woman character? That's not a woman, that's just a, um, a well-endowed man. All right, wait a minute. Oh, this is a lot of fun. It's just, you know, it's a slash and burn game. You've probably played games like this on your PC. It's kind of fun. It's free to start. Of course, in-app purchases will mean that I'll probably spend a lot of money on donuts. Ooh, infected shark. Uh-oh, that's the boss. Boy, I hope I have the mojo to defeat this guy. That's not the boss. Here we go. Here comes the boss. There we go. She is tough in her bikini. Oh, she's good. You know what? It's a metal bikini, okay? <laughs> don't knock it. Oh, he, used, he used to be a man. I don't know how he got to be a woman. <laughs> oh, I've defeated... Oh, no. He came back to life. Oh, that's a that's a big boss. Anyway, you, you get the idea. I don't really need to tell you a whole lot more. It's a fun game. It's well-constructed. There's some weird misspellings. I, I don't think that it's English speakers, native English speakers who wrote the game. Doesn't matter. It is a fun game to play. It is uh, Angel Stone, not Angle Stone, <laughs> and uh, I think you're going to get a lot out of it. With and it's free to start. Now I'm not crazy about freemium games, you know, because I, I know that in the long run I'm going to end up having to spend a lot of money. But that's a pretty game. I mean, that's a nice. Looking I think it's game. worth some money. So yeah. uh, I wish they'd charge ten bucks for it, but they right. didn't. So you can try it for free. Get really addicted, and then they're going to want big yeah. bucks. Angel Stone, my app cap. Attention. Ah! Thank you very much. <laughs> Miss, uh, uh, what do they call that when you wear a leather hat? Uh, I don't know. I think this is a little steampunkish. hat. Steampunk, that's the word. Yeah. It has mm -hmm. buffalo nickels on it. It does. Front. I like, I like that. I'm going to keep wearing it. I'll I wear actually it for bought that. Tonight. I spent money on both these hats. Hmm. Thank you, Linda.com. <laughs> <laughs> we do iOS today every Monday afternoon right after triangulation. What, what is it? Usually about 1.30? It's about, it's supposed to be around 12.30 Pacific. 3.30 Eastern. Okay. Sometimes it's 3.30 Pacific. <laughs> 12.30 Eastern. It doesn't matter. Just tune in and watch all day long. But if you can't, because I know some of you like have jobs, you could always get on-demand versions of every one of our shows. Twit.tv, in this case, twit.tv slash iOS. Yes, yes. iOS. Uh, or youtube.com slash iOS today. Or find your favorite podcatcher and download it that way because mm -hmm. we're everywhere we are everywhere remember the new name ios today used to be ipad today right if you've subscribed to ipad today you're still getting the show surprise i hope you're enjoying it i'm leo laporte i am megan maroney see you next time on ios today